Hey everyone, welcome back to Wix Fix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. My name is Ryan and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create a really cool header transition effect in Editor X using Velo animations. Let's go ahead and check it out. So here we have this little header here and it's just a static header. But as we start scrolling down the website, we have this nice little header appear right in front of our eyes. And then if we scroll back up, it disappears and lets the other, the original header appear. Now for this tutorial, we are gonna be using some Velo animations. And if you want to check out what Velo animation is and what you can do with it, I actually did create a little mini series here on the channel. So I'll leave that in the description below. And since it is Velo, I will include this on our website. So you can find the link to that in the description as well. However, and this is a big however, there are two things that I really wanna mention here. This tutorial is easy, but there are a couple of small things that we're gonna do in a very specific order to create this effect and make it look the best that it can on your website. And secondly, at the end, I'm gonna show you a little tip on how you can apply this to multiple pages. But I apologize for the long intro and let's go ahead and jump right in. So let's pretend that this is the header that we want to use and have it be static on our page. So the first thing that I want to do is grab this header and what I want to do is come down to the docking and I want to add a hundred pixels of margin to the top. And that's basically gonna give us some space to add our other header above it. But then what I want to do is come down to the adjust area and I want to add a negative 100 pixel to the Y value. So that means in the editor, it will appear right here and we can edit it while we design the other header above it. But when we press preview and we publish or publish the website, then on the live website, it will appear right where it's supposed to. So that's basically what we just did right there. And now what I want to do is go ahead and create our transition header. So I'm gonna come over to add and I'm just gonna add a container to our page. Now with this container, what I want to do is attach it to the top left. We're gonna set it to be 100% width. We're gonna set the height to be 100 pixels. Let's go ahead and change the background to like a black or a dark color. And we'll set the opacity to like 50%. Perfect. Now what I want to do is come over to add. We'll come, come down to embed. And we'll go ahead and add this embed code right here. Now with this embed feature, what I want to do is just bring this up just like this. We'll move it inside of our new header and we will stretch it. And now inside of this, what I want to do is go ahead and come over to our glass morphism effect. And we're just gonna copy this little code right here. And we're gonna press this little embed feature and paste in the code, just like that. Now we are gonna alter the code a little bit. So for blur, we're gonna set this to 10. For scale, what we're gonna do is 1.5. For radius, we're gonna set this to, for border radius, we'll set this to zero. For saturation, we'll move it down to 80. And once again, blur will be 10. And we'll do the same thing for this right here. We'll set the saturate to 80 and blur to 10. And we'll go ahead and press update. So now we should have an effect that looks like this, which is perfect. And now what I want to do is go ahead and copy this header right here. We're gonna come into the container and we'll paste it just like that. Now with this header, we wanna make sure that we do not have the docking or that we have the translate. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the translate here. And you can see that there is no 100 pixel docking there. So that's all we need there. But now what I want to do is actually grab this container and we're gonna come down to translate and we're gonna set this one to negative 100 pixels. So basically that's gonna do is it's going to, when we press preview, it's, it's gonna move it out of view. So it's no longer on our website. And then the next thing I want to do is come down to position and we'll set this to pinned and we'll pin it to the page. Okay, now we can go ahead and start actually adding the code. So of course you wanna make sure that dev mode is turned on. And now we can actually start adding our code. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the coding panel down here. And the first thing that I want to do is import our API. So what we're gonna say is import 
we're going to say timeline from Wix animations, just like that. And you'll notice that it's currently grayed out because we do not have any code down here referencing this API, but that will change when we start adding more code. The next thing I want to do is kind of create a variable. So we're going to say const or call this header and we need this to equal this box right here. So it's called box 22. So we're going to say dollar sign W and we'll place in box 22 just like that. Great. So now that is our header. The next thing I want to do is create a couple timelines. So what we're going to say is const, we're going to say header start. And this is going to equal a timeline just like that. Next, let's create another timeline. So we'll say const header timeline. And this is again going to equal a timeline. Fantastic. So now let's go ahead and create our timelines. So what we're going to say is header start underneath that. We're going to say dot add. And what we want to affect is the header. And then we want to say duration zero. So at zero seconds, we want the Y to equal negative 100 pixels basically. Okay, great. Now let's go ahead and create a header timeline animation. So let's say dot add and of course we want to affect the header for duration let's set this to like 500 or half a second for y we want to set this back to zero and then for easing let's go ahead and set this to ease in sign just like that so now the only thing that we need to do is add an event handler to tell this header timeline to play. So what we're gonna do is grab this section right down here, which is our second section. What we're gonna wanna do is come down here to our event handlers and we're gonna say on viewport enter and we're gonna press add and it's gonna add a little kind of function here for us. I'm just gonna delete the code inside of it cause we don't need it. And all we need to do here is basically tell header timeline to play. So we're going to say header timeline dot play. Perfect. So now if we go ahead and press preview on the website and we scroll down, you'll notice that it is working. However, when we scroll back up, it is not disappearing like we want it to. So we're going to come over to edit again. And now let's grab this section right here. And we're going to come down to the event handlers. Now we're going to say on viewport enter. And once again, let's delete the code that it adds. And now we're going to say header timeline dot reverse. And that's basically going to reverse the animation. So let's go ahead and do this again. We'll go ahead and press preview. So when we scroll down, the header appears, but then when we scroll back up, the header disappears. So now that it is working, I kind of want to show you the steps that I was talking about earlier that if you don't do things in a specific order. So if we grab this header and we look over here in position, we'll notice that we pinned it to the page. If we scroll down, we no longer have the option to adjust the initial state. So if I go ahead and turn this off back to default, now we have this adjust panel right here that is set to negative 100. But if we forget this step, if we do not change this to negative 100 and then we pin this to the page when we press preview you'll notice that we briefly see the transition header that is a little bit distracting and seems like a mistake so in order to prevent that which is what we did we grabbed this header we grabbed the container and before we pinned it, we adjusted the translate to negative 100 pixels. So then we can now pin it back to the page. 
and now it works exactly how we want. So as soon as we preview, we don't even get a glimpse of this. And yes, I did publish this and test it there as well, and it worked just how we would want it to. But let's say we want this header on all of our pages. So what we would need to do is, let's just go ahead and copy both of these elements here. We'll right click, we'll copy them. Let's just go ahead and create a new page. And we'll go ahead and delete the header because we are not using the actual header since we created our own. And let's just for fun, add a couple basic sections here. We'll add a hero. And then we can go ahead and add another section real quick. Okay. And let's just go ahead and paste in our headers here. So with this container, let's go ahead and make sure that it is docked to the top. So we'll set this to zero. Then we'll need to go back to our page. Let's copy this header here. And we'll paste it right about there. We'll center this on the page, send it to the top, and then we'll add a hundred pixel margin here. Now make sure that we have the negative 100 here. And then for this one right here, for this new header, let's go ahead and, and we'll notice that the position type didn't carry over, but let's make sure that we first have negative 100 pixel translate. Then we can come over to position type, set it to pinned, and pin it to the page, just like that. Great. And now it's time for the code. Now here's where things get a little bit more complicated because unfortunately event handlers don't typically copy well from website to website or even page to page. So what I would probably recommend is that we copy our import, our variables and our timelines, just like that and we come down to our new page and we go ahead and paste this in just like that. But, but now what we'll need to do is actually come to the sections themselves and basically add brand new event handlers for each of our pages. So we'll do that. And what we'll say here is header timeline dot play just like that and then we need to grab this section right up right up here we'll come down to the event handlers and say on viewport enter we'll add it we'll delete the filler text which i wish they didn't include and then we will say header dot timeline dot reverse so unfortunately you will have to do that for each of your pages, but if we go ahead and press preview, you'll notice that we have our initial header, which obviously we can't really see very well because I chose a white section. But as soon as we start scrolling down, our new header appears. And then if I scroll back up, the original header appears. But that's basically it for today's video. If you all did enjoy, please consider giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more Wix and Editor X content coming out really soon. Thank you all again, and I'll see you all in the next one.